Time now for Financial Friday on WOMI with your host, Drew Watson, sponsored by Align Wealth Management. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Peace, y'all. This is Common, and I'm passionate about helping the black community learn about lung cancer, a disease that disproportionately affects us, which is why I'm here with Stand Up to Cancer, to bring you the facts. Fact. In the United States, over 25,000 black men and women are diagnosed with lung cancer each year. Fact. Our community is more likely to develop advanced lung cancer than any other racial or ethnic group. Fact. Lack of access to health care, lack of clear resources for help, and mistrust in the medical system are not helping us beat this. Fact. Lung cancer continues to be the leading cause of cancer deaths among black men and women. But there is a way for us to take back control of our health and change things. Learn all that you can about you or a loved one's diagnosis and treatment options. Get more information on lung cancer, screening, and clinical trials by visiting standuptocancer.org slash lung cancer. Together, we can bring about real change. Because fact, change is possible, and it starts with you. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. Hope, um, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat, and you were talking about the lady and the painting, <laughs> and she's received it. So go ahead and tell us the rest of the story. Yes, and so it basically, you know, it was is... I was completely led by the Holy Spirit for it. And and really it was what she needed as a parent, you know, as a, a mom of a new child and, and it was a protection thing. And um, so it's, it's sometimes you can't put words to when you have to listen to the Holy Spirit on something, but you can almost feel and tell when you're shutting off logic and shutting off, you know, and sometimes, of course, obviously I need to listen to people at times and what they need. Um, but there are times where it's very solid, Holy Spirit led and, um, and God just works all things out for good. Sometimes I don't get everything right. And of course I have to change things or colors not right. And that's okay. And I do that too. But, um, but I like to see it as this is a ministering tool. It's scripture. Mm -hmm. It's what I think is life to, you know, our world it's the only thing that really works if you, when it comes down to it is knowing the truth versus the lie. And you can't recognize the lie unless you know the truth. And so when you have that hanging on your walls and when you, you know, are able to see it, if this is the way I contribute to the kingdom, <laughs> you know, I feel very blessed to be able to do that. And um, scripture is, is just, it's, it's life to us and we need it. And, um, and, you know, it, you can't go wrong no. with scripture. <laughs> no, no. He says, I set before you life, death, blessing and curse. Choose life so that you and your children may live. It's mm -hmm. it's a life and death decision. And and his word comes back true. I've tested it. I've seen mm -hmm. it, you know, 20 years into this. And I just had no clue I'd be where I'm at. And he just blessed it. And I mean, I, I you've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their descendants begging for bread. We're righteous because of him. It's not our you know, our doing, but it's, we just, he just always provides. He always makes a way. He always does what he says he's going to do. And you can't go wrong with it. You're right. He is so faithful as we mm -hmm. placed our, our hope and our trust in him. He blesses us. That's what his word says, who place mm -hmm. their hope and trust in him and their confidence. You have a beautiful website with whimsical art and scripture themed art. Um, I could go on and on, but why don't you share with our listeners what, what you have to offer on your website? Maybe some of the paintings that you have for sale. We only have like three minutes left. I wish okay. we had an hour left. So yeah. you'll have to come yeah. back on. <laughs> yes. Well, um, website is, um, hopegsmith.com and there's an inspirational part of it. There's, um, and it's, it's just prints of, you know, prints on canvas, prints on um, artist paper. And there's the smallest ones are 15 bucks. I mean, and then they go on up to hundreds of dollars, of course. Right. But I try to make a, an economical size as well so that people can experience and have them. Um, and you can order on there. But also, if you follow on Facebook and Instagram, I'm, I do daily things, I mean, or weekly things, I probably should say. A couple times a week, I post about how the Lord led me and things. It's more of a 
day in and day out what I'm doing as an artist. Um, it, it, it's the constant, you know, how social media is. It mm-hmm. makes you keep on. <laughs> that's right. And it's, um, you know, so that that's a way to just see where, where I'm at, what I'm doing with Art of Hope. And, um, um, you know, in downtown Wallace, is, we have a merchant association. We're involved in that and all that going on. So, and that's under Art of Hope or Hope G. Smith. And on Instagram, it's Art of Hope as well. So, yeah. what if someone wants to commission you to paint? How do they contact they you can, through your website or what? Either they can email me through my website. There's a contact page, and it you it'll just come directly to me, or they can um, direct message me on um, Facebook, Instagram, any of that. And, and I've done it all three ways. Um, some people I never even see who I do commission art for. So it's you know, it's the day of technology, so we can totally go through. And I I just send pictures and, um, you know, send sizes and pricing and all that as far as commissions go. Um, And then, of course, online, I mean, we have we have tons and tons of art that you can just scroll through and look at and um, and order prints of those. Um, So they make great gifts, encouragement, you know, things like that. Absolutely. What's your largest painting you've done so far? Um, Well, I have done a lot of uh, there's a lot of large especially my live paintings i've done really large ones but i'd probably say my largest ones i've done i did a baptistry one time and it was huge <laughs> that would be huge. yeah i don't do murals uh-huh. so, so to speak but i do i have done on large scale but because i'm not a mural artist in that you know somebody shows me a picture and i'd paint huge on a wall somewhere or anything i usually try to encourage people to do it on canvas so they can always have it right but um but I did do a baptistry one time. That was really, really big. <laughs> okay. So again, we can go to Facebook. We can go to Instagram. And your website again is? HopeGSmith.com. You have been such a delight to speak with. Well, thank and you. absolutely. So everyone go to her website. And I'd love to have you come back on as a guest. Yes, I would love to. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Well, thank you for listening. I'm Teresa Rowe. Everyone have a blessed day. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcasts, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more. From the Cabinet Doors and More studio, this is WOMI Owensboro, 99.1 FM and 1490 AM. The following program is paid for by Rainmaker Incorporated. Hello and welcome to Financial Fridays brought to you by Align Wealth Management. And boy, do we have a fantastic show for you today, Friday, June 9th, 2023. Uh, Markets had a pretty decent week, nothing to break the bank. But uh, every week that's positive is better than a week going uh Negative. Uh, yesterday's action saw the S and P up about 26 points, closing at 42.93. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up about 168 points and change to 33.833. The tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite was up 133 to 13,238. After the bell, uh, the news came out that Tesla continues to strike some deals with uh, what I would call analog car makers. Uh, for supercharger networks, uh, including, uh, I think now, General Motors as well as Ford. We did have, uh, in the commodity space, uh, oil was down just a touch. West Texas Intermediate Crude is hovering right around the uh, $71 a barrel, uh, down 160 yesterday to 70.93. Gold was up 25.73 to 1965 an ounce. Uh, in the agricultural commodity spaces, we still see live cattle um, punching up close to $180 per 100 pounds, but rest of the commodities were somewhat subdued. And in the interest rate space, the 10-year Treasury uh, benchmark is at 3.71%, uh, 30-year at 3.88%. Uh, those are both uh, still under the uh, 90-day uh, Treasury, which is at 5.13. As I said, we've got a great show for you lined up today. So keep listening to Financial Fridays right here at this station brought to you by Align Wealth Management. We'll be back 
after a word from our sponsors. What do you want to do when you grow up? When we were young, it's a question we were often asked. As we get older, our passions become clearer, our pursuits become careers, and if we're diligent, we begin to plan for the life we want to live. That's why at Ameriprise Financial, we ask what's most important to you? Starting with our confident retirement approach, your Ameriprise Financial Advisor will ask questions that will help you arrive at a customized plan that can help you realize your goals today, tomorrow, and throughout retirement. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Call Align Wealth Management, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, Inc. today at 270-684-8424. That's 270-684-8424. Office is located at 2708 New Hartford Road in Owensboro, Kentucky. The confident retirement approach is not a guarantee of future financial results. Investment advisory products and services are made available through Ameriprise Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Hello and welcome back to Financial Fridays brought to you by Align Wealth Management. I'm your host, Drew Watson, and we're going to take a deeper dive into some investment and economic news in this segment that we always do. And uh, we will take a look at a couple things today as the markets have been uh, really rallied uh, after last week's show on Friday. Uh, You know, we've had kind of a decent week. Uh, this week, but uh, you know certainly what we've seen uh, is uh, you know a pretty good uh, you know move in markets uh, that have continued on to this week, and we're going to take a deeper dive into first what the consumers are looking like, and then kind of some divergences going on. Globally, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, there's you know not a recommendation to buy or sell any securities. We're just kind of providing some information here. In this case, from our friends at Ameriprise's uh, Investment Research Group, and if you look at the consumer spending outlook, um, it appears that consumer spending is showing signs of moderating, but remains resilient despite a lot of the macro press- pressures out there, such as inflationary cost pressures and lower consumer confidence. Households have become more selective with consumer spending choices and have been trading down. But overall, spending has been relatively solid. Um, It's been impressive to see the strength of certain consumer discretionary categories such as lodging and leisure travel. And uh, there is a belief that household spending could continue to remain resilient unless there is a material deterioration in the labor market labor market. You know, as an example of moderating but resilient consumer spending in the lodging industry, i.e. hotels, according to Smith Travel Research US, the lodging industry revenue per available room growth or rev PAR has slowed to the low single digit growth. During the week ending May 26, US lodging industry rev PAR grew 3.6% year over year. During the comparable period last year, lodging industry rev par was up 33.9% year over year, and lodging industry demand growth has slowed, but still remains surprisingly solid despite these headwinds. So if you look, you know, that rev par was, you know, above 30, golly, as, as recently as in January, then last fall, um, and then last summer. Wow. Another example of resilient consumer spending in the U.S. overall retail industry. And according to Redbook, U.S. retail industry comparable store sales growth has also slowed to low single digits. During the week ending May 27th, Retail industry comparable store sales increased 1.2% year-over-year, according to Redbook. During the comparable period last year, retail industry comparable sales were up 12.6% year-over-year. Growth has slowed materially over the past year, but growth remains positive. One of the primary things that we believe should really have a negative impact on consumer spending is a weak labor market. If households fear they will lose their jobs, that could have a significant negative impact on consumer spending. Despite recent corporate headlines of layoffs, 
unemployment is still pretty low, really at 3.7%. Now, also something that uh, is kind of propping everything up could be favorable household balance sheets, and that could continue to be a tailwind for consumer spending. Therefore, unless there is a shock to the system that causes a significantly weaker labor market, i.e. lots of job cuts, consumer spending could continue to be resilient for a while. So, you know, one thing to keep in mind is is as we've kind of gone through some of the earnings over the last few weeks that have come out with regards to, um, you know, consumer spending and where they are, so to speak, uh, it's clear some discretionary spending, such as on uh, streaming services, has uh, definitely been reduced. And if you look uh, earlier in the week, on Monday, the Institute of Supply Management's U.S. Services Index came in notably below expectations, posting a reading of 50.3 for the month of May versus an expected 52.1. This is the lowest reading for services uh, since December's 49.9. Despite the shortfall, a report components still reflected month-over-month growth, which is in contrast to the recent contractionary conditions, say below 50, the number 50, reported in the ISM's manufacturing index. Uh, as a reminder, these measures are diffusion indexes, meaning numbers above 50 month-over-month indicate growth, while numbers below 50 indicate contraction. So here's the basic theme of this. Expansion in the service sector and moderate contraction in the manufacturing space is a theme being reflected around the world, not just here in the U.S. Service sector diffusion indexes have generally been accelerating in recent months, months in which manufacturing measures have mostly been in contraction. The weak U.S. ISM services index mentioned above was also an outlier. The market, M-A-R-K-I-T, U.S. Services Index, posted a business activity reading of 54.9 for the month versus 55.1 in April, thus suggesting a much stronger pace of sector growth relative to the ISM reading. So you might say, what's driving this divergence? In the view of uh, the Investment Research Group, the same factors that are driving the separation here in the U.S. are influencing the trends internationally. During the pandemic, as people were generally isolated in their homes, they continued to spend on household goods, apparel, toys, etc. You know, and that was mainly due to you know shopping online, internet delivery, while their ability to consume services such as travel, leisure, and entertainment were significantly curtailed. Uh, That would kind of go into what I mentioned at the top of this segment about the lodging index. A reversal of those trends is currently ongoing. Additionally, sharper or sharply higher interest rates have slowed housing sales and the new spending on appliances, furniture, and other household capital goods that normally goes along with that. So although these are slowing, it may be that this is all part of just what an economy does after interest rates have increased and uh, things have kind of moved on. Keep listening to Financial Fridays. We'll be back in 60 seconds after a word from our sponsor. When today is unpredictable, you need sound advice and strong support to help you stay focused on your long-term financial goals for tomorrow. Ameriprise has been guiding clients through challenging times for over 125 years. You can take comfort in working with an advisor who's backed by that strong experience and who's there to guide you with personalized, goal-based financial advice. Together, you and your Ameriprise advisor can plan your future while navigating your now. Call Align Wealth Management, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, today at 270-684-8424. That's 270-684-8424. Office is located at 2708 New Hartford Road in Owensboro, Kentucky. Hello and welcome back to Financial Fridays brought to you by Align Wealth Management. I'm your host, Drew Watson. And in our financial planning segment this week, we are going to take a deeper dive 
into legal documents uh, that everyone should need to have, uh, specifically um, with regards to not just a will, but the other documents that go along with the will, such as kind of power of attorney documents and or health care power of attorney documents. And uh, there's also things like guardianship. So we'll try to break down today some information on these that hopefully be helpful. As it pertains to power of attorney documents, on a general power of attorney, what you're giving someone is the authority to act on your behalf in financial and legal matters uh, while you are still alive. So sometimes these power of attorneys can be a springing power of attorney in case you are incapacitated, and then the power of attorney kind of quote-unquote comes to life. Or secondarily, they can just be a general power of attorney that uh, as just that other person can act on your behalf. Now, obviously, and sometimes you can't say it enough, you must have an unbelievable uh, amount of trust in the person that you would be appointing as your power of attorney because uh as I've just said, they can literally act on your behalf while you are alive. Now, it's not uncommon that depending on how many financial relationships you have, that each one of those relationships would require some additional documentation to go along with your standard power of attorney document. Usually, a power of attorney document is set forth uh, based on whichever state you live in's state statute, an attorney would take the applicable pieces of the state statute and create a power of attorney document around that so it does um, work within the state statutes. And obviously, you know, it's never an attorney, or hopefully it's not an attorney's uh, goal to create something that's illegal on its face. But at the end of the day, the attorney will need to be making a power of attorney document that uh, fits within the statutes of the state which you reside. Even though you have this document, um, it's not uncommon, you know, that your investment place may want you to sign additional power of attorney documents, that your bank may have additional documents that go along with it. Because especially in this day and age, if they do business across state lines and a lot of different jurisdictions, really what they're wanting is just kind of a backup paperwork in case anything ever goes wrong that you have acknowledged, yeah, uh, this is my power of attorney. I know we set it up under one state, but I want it to be able to be covered, you know, basically nationally. So my experience would also let listeners know you don't want to be uh, <laughs> you don't want to be frustrated because um, at, at the end of the day, what we are looking at is situations that may include um, you having to converse with people that aren't familiar with what a power of attorney is. Uh, and I know it's tough, but and I know it's frustrating, but at the end of the day, you know, you will come in contact with individuals uh, in this world that aren't up to speed on everything. And as hard as it may seem to believe, yes, you will come in contact with people at medical offices and medical billing places that have no idea what a health care power of attorney is or a power of attorney or a guardianship. Now, that's why it's also a very good uh, best practice on your phone even if you have like a, a photo album where you can have downloaded your important agreements, um, especially if you're a power of attorney for someone else or a guardian for someone else, because it is uh, never stops to astound me 
how few people, especially in the professional ranks, understand what powers of attorney are, what guardianships mean, what health care power of attorneys mean. And uh, you might need these documents even when you think you don't. So, so keep in mind, it's one thing to have the document created. Then secondarily, it's always good to know what the document is for and how it can help you. And then finally, it's being able to have access to the document when you need it, when in case, and unfortunately it happens regularly, you come across people that don't fully understand uh, what these documents mean, what authority it gives the person that's been entrusted, that power of attorney or guardianship. And um, it can not eliminate headaches, but make the headaches smaller because you are prepared. And if one thing uh, life has taught me is uh, <laughs> preparation is about 80% of success. I will kind of quickly end this segment with regards to uh, you know, I, I've, I've, what happens after death. But as I said, the power of attorney operates while you're alive. The Whoever you appoint as executor or executrix of your estate, uh, or some states have kind of gone um, gender neutral and say a state administrator, whoever you have appointed in your will for those roles, take on this characteristic um, once you pass. So the same kind of best practice about having maybe a, a little file in your phone for these documents, if you are someone's executrix or executor, um, you know, take a picture, file it in your phone with your important papers, and you will also need the most important piece of this is the court-stamped filing where the judge has said, yes, this person is good to go to act in that capacity and that can kind of get you on your merry way because again there's no telling where you will run into people that have no idea what any of this means keep listening to financial fridays right here on this station brought to you by align wealth management we'll be back after a word from our sponsors what do you want to do when you grow up when we were young it's a question we were often asked as we get older our passions become clearer our pursuits become careers and if we're diligent we begin to plan for the life we want to live that's why at ameriprise financial we ask what's most important to you starting with our confident retirement approach your ameriprise financial advisor will ask questions that will help you arrive at a customized plan that can help you realize your goals today tomorrow and throughout retirement with the right financial advisor life can be brilliant Call Align Wealth Management, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, Inc. today at 270-684-8424. That's 270-684-8424. Office is located at 2708 New Hartford Road in Owensboro, Kentucky. The confident retirement approach is not a guarantee of future financial results. Investment advisory products and services are made available through Ameriprise Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Hello and welcome back to Financial Fridays brought to you by Align Wealth Management. I am your host, Drew Watson, Private Wealth Advisor with Align. And this is the email bag segment of the show where we'll take your questions uh, over the week and get them out on the air. Uh, and in looking at this, you know, kind of the uh, common questions uh, – this week that have come in and feel free to email them to me at William dot a dot Watson uh, at a m p f dot com have centered around uh you know the market this year is, is kind of up, but where are we um, from the longer term and I would tell you that uh, this is an item that we kind of have discussed uh, maybe about a month and a half ago. But generally speaking, uh, you know, if you've been invested uh, for roughly, let's say, two years uh, in the S&P 500, uh, we are just back, uh, you know, really 
last week to where we were two years ago. I think uh, the week of June 11th, 2021, the S&P closed at 4241. Um, you know, the peak that we hit would be roughly around 4816, uh, the first week of January 22. And of course, you know, this week we've been, you know, hanging around the uh, high 4200 level on the S&Ps. So that's a, a long two years that, uh, that, that you've been in, uh, and really not seen any growth. Now, that's not saying you haven't made any money as the S&P does spit out, you know, a nominal one and a half percent dividend yield, in, you know, in any given year. But we can definitely commiserate. You might feel like, Hey, you know, I'm kind of treading water. The chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average over the last two years is uh, a little bit more <laughs> depressing. I mean, you know, we were uh, 2021 at about 34,756. So we're about a thousand points below where we were two years ago on, on the Dow. The Dow topped out that first week in January 22 at roughly uh, 36,840 and change. Uh, the lows put in last fall uh, were around um, 28,000. So, you know, definitely we had a, uh, you know, a bear market there. But but the, that index uh, is, is kind of worse off than what it was two years ago. And if you look at the NASDAQ index, uh, it's quite a bit lower than two years ago. We were at around 14,046. So we're about 900 points uh, below where we were two years ago on the, on the NASDAQ. And the uh, you know, NASDAQ kind of bounced around uh, from last summer to the fall to around the holidays in a big time bear market uh, consolidation pattern uh, and is just now kind of getting back to where it was. If you look at the uh, you know small cap index, uh, well, let's start with mid cap. Uh, the uh, you know the iShares core mid cap. That's also uh, you know about two years ago was at two seventy four is quoted now. You know it's it's down still down roughly probably eight percent from where it was uh, a, a couple of years ago on the mid on the mid cap uh, small cap index. Um, the Russell 2000, um, you know, it's a bigger scene of carnage. You know, a couple of years ago, Russell was about 233. It's still 185. Uh, you know, you're looking at probably a 20 percent uh, move to the downside there. And so the question is, given kind of the stagnating market, you know, is this something that's, you know, for lack of a better term, normal? when it comes to investing in stocks. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, yes. I mean, um, stock prices move day to day, but but if you step back over the last two years, you have not been, um, you know, rewarded for being diversified uh, in that, uh, you know, small cap stocks are off probably the most. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you need to have a diversified portfolio uh, as that's what, you know, market forecasters and people like me will, will preach. But but being in small stocks right now has been painful. Um, and medium-sized stocks, typically, if you have a 15-year time frame, have performed from the index standpoint, uh, have had superior performance than larger stocks. Uh, they are also too off about uh, nine or ten percent. But if you're a believer in what's called mean reversion, that uh, eventually performance will return to the mean, then uh, you know you may uh, feel better about uh, where you are. But but you know after a brief downturn last year, you know technology is back to the uh, four for performance. And last year, you know, energy was the lead dog. Um, you know, healthcare did well, and definitely both of those sectors have kind of taken a little bit of a breather this year. 
Now, energy's kind of come on with a uh, with a really good move in the last week since the Saudis have uh, announced they're going to cut oil production uh, and some of the OPEC plus countries are going to follow suit. But still, I mean, we haven't kind of blown the the top off of the oil markets either. So, you know, what we see is on a two-year basis, if you're able to take some of the noise away, really we've had kind of an uneventful, you know, I kind of cringe when I say that, two-year period. If, if, if you were Rip Van Winkle and you went in a cave, fell asleep, came out um, two years later, you may not think we've been through a lot, but given the news cycle that we've had, we definitely, we definitely, it feels like it. So that leaves me at my final point for this week. Uh, I think what we all need to do is step back and, and realize that the media in this country may not be doing anyone a favor uh, because there's media that's on 24-7 in the form of uh, Twitter, cable news, internet-based news, other news agencies. It's almost like they have to have something to report on. And for all of the angst and anxiety and hand clenching and, you know, you know, hand wringing that's gone on in the last 24 months, I mean, we're basically right back to where we started on a lot of major investment and commodity indexes. Now, uh, you know, living through it, with the stress that the media places on us, uh, I don't think has done anybody any favors. But doing this now for almost 30 years, um, I think next year will be my 30th year doing this. Y you know, really, uh, there's not a lot to get worked up about. The market will kind of zig and zag over time. It kind of goes, as we say, uh, up and to the right on the graph, so to speak. But it, it is clear that all the news that's supposedly great, supposedly terrible, really it doesn't do a lot to move the needle and that it's market fundamentals. And generally what I would say over the last two years with a lot of businesses, fundamentally we've had some decent growth, uh, but there hasn't this been any This program game has been paid really. for by Rainmaker Incorporated. This is WOMI Owensboro, 99.1 FM and 1490 AM, translator W256 SIA a Town Square media station. He claims they've indicted again an innocent man. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News, former President Trump's reaction to being charged with federal crimes related to his handling of classified documents. Two months after an indictment in New York City for falsifying business records, which he also calls a hoax. We can't let this continue to go on because it's ripping our country to shreds. Fox's Nate Foy's in New Jersey. Former President Trump has been huddling at his club in Bedminster with his top aides for the past few days uh, in anticipation of this indictment. The indictment itself remains under seal, but sources tell Fox News that former President Trump is charged uh, with seven counts, and they include obstruction of justice and illegal retention of classified information in violation of the Espionage Act. Democrats cheered the indictment in tweets. Congressman Jerry Connolly wrote, no one is above the law. Another House Democrat, Greg Landsman, called Trump a danger and toxic, and Congressman Jamal Bowman posted, we must ban Trump from running again. Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace just told Fox, you know, you're watching the executive branch try to take out their political enemies because of the accusations against the Biden family. Now, just yesterday, Mace reviewed an FBI document detailing a bribery allegation against Joe Biden from when he was vice president. She calls it serious. The president yesterday laughed it off as malarkey. He's also under investigation for mishandling classified documents. The air is a lot cleaner across the Northeast. Quality readings under 100 from Washington to New York City. After two days of hazardous levels, seven times that with a sky full of Canadian wildfire smoke. Many Democrats blame climate change, but one has a different view. Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia says that's not the only cause to look into. Our committee has discussed at length the impacts of climate conditions and past mismanagement of forest that has ushered in a new era of fuels and wildfires. During a hearing looking at the federal response and impact of wildfires, Manchin questioned if the government has spent its money wisely to prevent them. That's Ryan Schmelz. America's listening to Fox News.
With all the chaos and stress that we face every single day, it's not easy to be your best when you wake up every morning. And it's an extra tall order if you toss and turn all night. This was me a lot of the time. Years, really. Can't settle down my mind or slow it down fast enough to sleep. What's changed? The Relief Factor Company introduced me to Relief Factor Sleep. This is so easy to drift off to sleep completely at ease. And when you wake up, I don't feel groggy. This is all natural. I feel great. Relief Factor Sleep. 100% drug-free with a blend of natural ingredients designed to promote healthy sleep by reducing anxiety and stress and improving mood and promoting relaxation. I know that it works. My wife takes it as well. I felt the difference on the first night, and so will you. The first bottle is $19.95, so unleash the power of great sleep for yourself by calling 800, the number 4, relief. 800, the number 4, relief. Or go to relieffactor.com. Dream big and sleep tight. There's some gains this morning on Wall Street. The Dow is up 76 points. The NASDAQ rising 132. The S&P 500 adding 22 points. The price of oil down about a quarter, still around 71 bucks a barrel. An oil giant has lost a costly lawsuit. In 1974, Chevron subsidiary Union Oil Company of California operated a sump pit for oil and gas production near Santa Barbara. That process left behind the carcinogen benzene on the property. Eleven years later, Kevin Wright bought the land and built a house. Court documents say nearly three decades later, he was diagnosed with a cancer that attacks plasma cells in the blood. That cancer can be caused by benzene exposure. Jurors decided Wright should get $63 million, saying Chevron had covered up the toxic pit. The company says it's going to appeal. Jill NATO, Fox News. The price of gas is up two more cents this morning. AAA's national average for regular at three fifty eight per gallon. That's two pennies higher than we were paying last Friday, six cents more than a month ago. There's news for some drivers who plug in instead of filling up. Electric vehicles made by General Motors will be able to use much of Tesla's vast charging network starting early next year. In addition, GM will adopt Tesla's connector. That's the plug that links an electric vehicle to a charging station into its electric vehicles beginning in 2025. General Motors joins Ford in shifting its electric vehicles to work with about 12,000 of Tesla's roughly 17,000 chargers across the U.S. and Canada. That's Fox's Hillary Barsky in hockey. Yet another overtime win for Florida. The Panthers beat the Vegas Golden Knights 3-2 to two to go now. The series in the Stanley Cup Finals now two games to one in favor still of the Vegas Golden Knights. The Panthers are now 7-0 and oh in overtime this postseason. I'm Dave Anthony, and this is Fox News. Hey, guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.